Hey, my legion. How y'all doing today? I'm here today with a movie review, and I'm reviewing a, a horror film called Bigfoot vs. Zombies. I saw it on Tubi TV, and I saw it primarily because of the title, of course, like like most people would. would. And uh, it's from Wild Eye Releasing that did some other crazy movies, like Tony shared a, another movie they did called Sharkenstein, which looks pretty bad. I remember seeing Frankenfish a long time ago, and Frankenfish was actually pretty good. They spent some money on this. These are all low budget. And I don't mind low budget movies at all. I've seen a lot of really good ones. But I mean this was shot on video. Uh, it start. It takes place. It, it opens up with a girl. And uh, you know she's in the woods. And she's attacked by Bigfoot kind of. And then you see like a whole bunch of dead bodies. In this one area. And you find it's a body farm. And the body farm is a place where. Uh, they have like different. Uh corpses in different uh, stages of decomposition for them to do, like, forensic science upon. You know, and experimentation and stuff like that. You know, just for, uh, you know, like you see CSI type stuff, you know. And you see this guy with, uh, with a barrel and he drops it. It goes right down the hill and it leaks this chemical waste out and it causes the zombies eventually, it takes a while for them to come back to life. It looked a lot like, whenever you see that thing, it was like, um, in, uh, it reminded me a lot of Redneck Zombies, that part. But, I mean, that one, it had toxic waste, and it had, like, it was a yellow barrel. This one's just a blue barrel, and it doesn't say what's on it. And he just dumps it down, it rolls down the hill. It's similar, very similar to Redneck Zombies, that's what it reminded me of. Redneck Zombies is way better than this, believe me. Um, you know, and the zombies came back to life, and then Bigfoot steps in the picture, and he fights the zombies, kind of. And whenever he, the zombies come, he kind of, like, pushes them. And then he eventually fights them, kind of, somewhat. Uh, and there's a scene whenever the zombies really start coming out. You know, they have, like, one... It was really weird. I don't know what possessed them to do this. They showed the zombies walking, and then they have a photo. Like, the zombies in this one feel like one zombie is like this. And then there's another zombie, and they're all standing still to show how many zombies there are. Like this, for, like, a minute. It doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, I don't know why. I thought they were going to burst into Thriller or something like that. Um, <clears throat> this movie is pretty bad. And not so bad as good as this. So bad as it's very average. And then, um, like I said, it's about the forensic scientists. And a couple of guys that want to take the bodies in there. And basically it's like they're meandering around the place for about... It's 78 minutes, but boy, it's seven, it seems like a lot longer than 78 minutes. It moves at snail's pace, as, so does the vans that they drive. It's really bad. I mean, the zombies themselves, some of them were like, just had masks, and they had like the rubber hands that you get at like the Halloween store. And then some had like some cheap paint uh, makeup. And then there was one guy that I liked that had a skull... And he had to hold the skull like this so it'd stay in place. And he was walking around like this. And you knew he couldn't see nothing. So I don't know if someone was helping or not so he didn't trip and hurt himself. Uh, very low budget film. A couple of things I did like. I liked the opening sequel. Well, first of all, my friend Tony Town did the uh, thumbnail. And it's a painting, Bigfoot vs. Zombies. Far better than this movie deserves. I mean, I don't think they really even tried. What they did was they thought of an idea... And uh, the title that would get people to watch it out of curiosity. And they kind of half-assed the rest of the movie. But what I did like, I liked uh, the, well, the opening sequence uh, with the credits and stuff. I loved the uh, the main score of the film. I really thought that was pretty good in at the end. And then uh, the, uh, the scenes when they were in the forest, they looked really good on the TV. And that was pretty good. Uh, the sound effects were pretty, I mean... Uh, but whenever you see a zombie, you hear a bunch of sound effects. You know one of them was just done in post-production. Um, Bigfoot was just a guy in an ape suit with like a big comb over it. He, they might have put like an extra wig on it and made him look really more scraggly. One of the worst ape uh, suits I've ever seen in my life. Because they used to complain about movies like White Pongo. And the gorilla and the ape and stuff like that. It, having being a ratty ape suit but this was this was really a bad one it looked like it was falling apart it was it was terrible um they didn't care i mean a low budget horror film i like this type it's really good it's like something like redneck zombies and i remember when when i was in germany 
I rented it, and it was just the unrated version. For the longest time, that's the only version you could... I mean, not the unrated, the censored, R-rated version. I didn't know that's what it was at the time. And that's the only version of you could find anywhere. I mean, and they didn't release an unrated version until like 10 or 15 years later. And I finally saw it. It's a big contrast. But even the, the R-rated censored version is much better than this. At least they tried. But the unrated version is awesome. If you get to see with all the gore. The gore in this one is terrible, what they do show. Like, you pull out intestines. It looks like a bunch of balloons. Uh, to get, it was really bad. Uh, and then they do like all these fancy tricks when they, it was terrible. And they, they had CGI in it. It was some of the worst CGI. They, they poured like gas on this car and they set it on fire and it, it looked awful. It was really bad. It was pretty shockingly bad. And like I said, it meanders all over the place. Uh, and there's a scene towards the last 20 minutes where it looks like it's going to get really good. And then they left you off the hook. And then they, they just run outside of the building. They had a scene where they could have confronted the zombies in the building. That would have been really good. But nope. Bigfoot goes like this and and pushes the door open. That's all they had to do to get out. They could have easily escape those horrible zombies. Um, a pretty bad movie. But like I said, movies like Redneck Zombies and uh, also Zombie 90 were low budget, very low budget films shot on video like this one was that were actually very good and entertaining. I don't think they really, tr they kind of half-assed it. I mean, the acting was okay. A lot of it was more serious. Uh, they had, like, made two two jokes. I laughed at two jokes and stuff like that, but uh, it's almost all, movies, most of the movie is very serious. I mean, it's, it doesn't even try to have a sense of humor, not a real sense of humor anyways. It's it's pretty bad, so I probably would avoid it. I give uh, Bigfoot versus Zombies about two and a half out of ten. Well, no, I'll give it a two out of ten. It's pretty bad. So I hope you like this movie review. Uh, I would not see this movie. But, I mean, the title gets you interested in seeing it. And then the trailer looks okay. Because they edited it down. If they could have edited out some of the stuff in there, some of the filler, it made it like an hour long or even a 45-minute long movie, it might have been okay. Not great, but... And, but, yeah, this one was pretty bad. I didn't hate it, but I didn't think it was very good. I mean, I've seen some really ones I've really, really, really hated. But this one was pretty bad. So, that's my review of Bigfoot vs. Zombies. So, until next time, bye, please. Take care of my legion.